The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In this episode and the next episode, we're going to be finishing up the mini pinball prototype kit. Felix, I see you have some PCBs. Yep, we got our new PCBs back from uh, Osh Park. Oh, sweet. The big thing that we did was we lifted up the screen and moved everything else down. Did you stuff one yet? Yep, and here we go. Oh, here sweet. is the board with everything except for the Arduino on it. Okay. Well, the user's either going to use the Arduino or the Teensy, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, all right, so we have the audio amplifier, the lights, the switches, four MOSFETs, four servos, bunch of power regulation, big power switch. Looks like you bodged in an LED light for power. Yeah, I just did that for testing. And then we've got the Teensy. So in this episode, we're gonna take this board, make sure that it works, install it in our pinball case, and then get our prototype game made. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's Priests. Regrettable Acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I hooked up an LED to a uh, socket so I can plug it in and test it. I just changed the code so it will turn on the LED that is relative to the switch. 16 switches, 16 LEDs. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go through here and very boringly test each one to make sure everything worked. Then I'll test the coils and the servos and then everything will be good to go and we can actually start, uh, well, we have to do two things. We have to write some code and then we also have to put together a test game. Oh, okay, so it looks like this is zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then that should be eight. So that one should coincide with this light. All right. Uh, now I'm gonna make sure that we have a servo library installed and I'll try controlling one of those. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna plug in this servo. It definitely did something. So I've got two of these switches attached to sound events. And this one should change the state of the servo. Hey, let's talk about debounce. Yeah, see that, how that was kind of jittery if I didn't do it just right? So we're gonna need to add some debounce to these switches. Uh, what that basically means is, you know, as the switch opens and closes, there can be very small fluctuations in the state. Like it could close and kind of open and close again. Now we can't really see those with our crude fingers, but these microcontrollers can. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the switch library so that I can actually create an array, so each switch has its own debounce setting, depending on what kind of switch it is, because they might have different mechanical properties. Uh, yeah, so I just need to check the coils next. Once I do that, then this board will have checked out, and then we can start working on the libraries, so we can put this inside of the pinball machine. I've adjusted the angle of the flippers, put in larger solenoids, and adjusted the length of the rod's throw. So let's see what we got here. Turn it on. Oh, cool, I did a loop. Mostly I wanna see if I can get the ball everywhere that it needs to go. That's cool. It's pinball construction set. No, 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 this is Ikea pinball. It's for college kids and divorced men. Does it really need switches? It's kind of fun to whack the ball around. It reminds me of those like old marble maze games, except with like way more electronics. So the last time we worked on this, I created this uh, grid of X's. Sounds like some sort of Bridget Jones spreadsheet. Um. <laughs> there you go. You got an idea for the next movie. Okay, well, I think the flippers are pretty much working the way I want them to. They're a little beat up. I should probably reprint some of the parts. So what I think I need to do next is change the layout of some of these uh, feature uh, mounts. Yeah, I mean, even the 45 degree ones aren't really that good of an angle. It's probably more like 22.5 I should do because the ball will ease into that a lot better. So I think what I'll do next is make another revision of this and basically uh, re-laser cut this 
I'll still keep the tabs around the outside, you know, to make like an outer perimeter. But I think it should definitely have, um, I should put more thought into the curvature of the ball because then we can have some nice fun loops. I mean, stuff like this works for a loop, but if I put some more thought into the angles, it could work a lot better. And then we could cut pieces that mount in kind of like nice curves and arcs that the ball is more likely to do because the ball's not doing that. It's doing this when it comes off the flippers. It's a cool new dance. Okay, we were discussing ideas of how to better move these walls around and Karen suggested making some sort of like star-shaped insert that would plug into the board and be held in some way and then the wood would go into it like a, like a slot, like, like that. And then we could have little nubs on the inside of the plastic thing that would grab onto these little holes in the wood. Kind of looks like a piece of punch tape or something. So what I did was I took this basic shape and I had to make sure that it would fit around the ball. So even if the ball was bumped up against the wood, it would not interfere with this piece. See how I basically did an offset from the wood and then designed my piece around that. So I exported that as a DXF and took it into Fusion 360. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more lines to it. Sketch lines, cool. I take this piece and I'm going to revolve it. Okay, so I have the profile selected. Just need access of rotation, boom, there we go, round piece. All right, for some reason it turned off the sketch, I don't know why. Okay, and I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna extrude them symmetrically. Boop. Cool, now we have that. Yeah, that could be cool. And this interface here, that's where I can draw those um, rounded nubs. But before I do that, I'm gonna go to the bottom of this sketch and I'm gonna create a new sketch based off this. Yeah, all right, so we talked about having kind of like, almost like a Torx star end. So you could put this in and it could be held at different positions. So I guess we just wanna, you know, something that can be divided by 360, which is a lot of things. Uh, do they have, they should have polygons here, right? Inscribed polygon, yeah, all right. So obviously that's, you know, we probably want more than that. 360 divided by six would be 60 degrees. I think we need at least, oh gosh, twice that? Well, I think a good angle on pinball is 22.5 degrees. So I guess we could just say 360 divided by 22.5 is 16, right? So what if we did like 18 divides into 20? So yeah, let's see what happens if we do an 18-sided polygon. Okay, so the problem with that is the surfaces are really shallow, in which case we probably want more of a star-shaped thing. Uh, or we could possibly generate a gear. That is something else we could do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a sort of a star tool. I'm not exactly sure where it is in this program. I'm gonna find that tool and then draw it on the bottom because if we just have like 16 flat surfaces, it's not gonna have nearly enough resolution, but if we have them inset into the shape, then we can have something to grab onto. Then once we have a shape in here, I'll export it as a DXF back into AI and then we can have a laser cut pattern of it. Okay, I drew a little circle nub here. Well, first I thought about the math and um, if we have, uh, you know, 0.5129 times pi equals that divided by 18 nubs means, you know, they can't be wider than 0.089 inches. So I'm gonna go with like 0.075, which I believe is what this is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, well, I guess I could do it outside or inside. Gosh, which one should I do? Uh, maybe I'll do inside. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna subtract it once. Now I'm gonna to go to modify, I'm sorry, create circular pattern. I'm gonna select that thing. And then the axis, I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna say, okay, how many times do I wanna do it? I wanna do it 18 times. It should, there we go. Oh, wow, I didn't expect it to do that. Look at that, well, that's okay. Yeah, so now we have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, rotation points. So that's pretty cool. So as far as this stuff goes, um, Oh yeah, I wonder if I could just select these faces and extrude them up. That'd be kind of cheap and easy way to do it. Oh, you no longer exist. <laughs> That's cool and all, but the thing is they don't actually need to be subtracted in that way. So I'm gonna actually go back in time a little bit to here. Yeah, I'm gonna go back in time. Gotta promise me you'll be back in time. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm gonna pre-extrude this. There we go. Now I'm gonna do this feature like I did before. Ooh, I just thought of a problem with that. If I rotate that around there, there's gonna be overhang. That's not good. So it might actually be better to make this on the outside. Overhang when I 3D print it. Because repeat after me, 3D printing is not magic. I can't hear you. 
let's try that again. Okay, so that's the object. This is the axis. And 18. Yeah, all right. That looks pretty good. Whether or not it will print with good quality, that's another question. <laughs> we'll definitely have to take into account some slop. Something else to keep in mind is um, this would just fall through the wood. Like if you cut a hole in the play field that was that shape, there's nothing to keep this from falling through it because the flanged portions are above it. However, the fact that it's holding wood should keep it in place. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the inside of this face here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn off the bodies because otherwise they just get in my way. All right, so I'm gonna go in and uh, let's go in here and find that, well, this is the center, so I guess we don't have to really find it. Uh, 0.075, if I make the holes in the wood 0.075, I should make this one a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make it 0.07, and then its height above the surface, uh, what is that? 0.1 inch, okay. So I'll just add a dimension for that, dimension to that, 0.1 inch, wonderful. Oh, I know what I could do. I could just probably extrude up a little bit and then just round it off. That would probably work. So let's get the body back. And um, if it's 0.075, I'll go about half. I'll go like 0.03. I mean, again, we might have to tweak this. This is just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. You know, even that looks like too much. I'm gonna try 0.2. That might work. Come in here and I'm going to fillet it. See, even that, I think that's too much because there's not gonna be any flex here. That's not gonna be able to move back and forth. So I'm gonna actually reduce that even further. Uh, what was this, 0.02, I'm gonna go, no, no, not, not 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Of course, that might not be, I don't know, let's go 1.5. There, I'll meet you in the middle, 0.03, cool. Hmm, I wonder if we need those on both sides. That might be overkill and actually prevent it from working. Should see if I can use the pattern tool again to duplicate this. Pattern, pattern on path, oh yeah. Oh, I don't have a path though for it to take. I guess I could create one. Let's turn off the body, turn on this. Uh, you know, it might actually be easier just to, to duplicate this. <laughs> so let's make another, what was it, 0.07? Now, when I did it on AI, I wanted it to have basically its own distance from itself, so there's enough structure. So whole space, and then the next hole, right? Uh, so that means from center to center would be, well, I guess it would be it times two, but for some reason I'm still checking, 0.15. <laughs> I'll still check anyway, just to make it more complicated. That to that. 0.15. Actually, yeah, I, well, if it's, uh, if it has a dimension, I can always change it later if something is amiss. Cool. Let's go back into our 3D view. What, I get this done to 0.03? Uh, yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, I'm gonna 3D print this, laser cut some wood, and then we'll see how well it snaps together. I reprinted these with a flange at the bottom. So let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot to put a uh, fillet on top. Oh well. There's now 16 bumps, which means it's divisible by four, so we can now go 90 degrees, yay! And also a minimum of 22.5 degrees. Let's see if that works. I'll put this one here, yeah. Now, let's try to snap this into it. Living hinge isn't like perfect, but yeah. See now, if this was in a pinball, maybe not that way, but it's a nice smooth angle for the ball to roll along. That's in there pretty good. Um, the walls hold it in from the top and this flange holds it in from the bottom. Now the question is, can we take it apart without it breaking? Oh man, that's still really tight. I did bump that height up a little bit. I probably shouldn't have. And also the tolerance is still pretty tight. It should be like 3.1 millimeters wide, and this is three millimeter wood. Uh, I probably should make it more tolerant. It's very intolerant as is. I mean, it works, but I mean, with this living hinge, you kind of run the risk of breaking the living hinge. Let's try something here. Let's put this in at 22.5 degrees, and we'll put a wall on it. See now on a pinball machine, that would be a really nice entry angle off the flipper. Yeah. Ooh, I wonder if we can make it so these could be like broken apart, you know? Like you get big long strips of these and you could just kind of cut it down to size. It's still really tight. 
like too tight. Like I really have to strain and again, I'm not a kid. I'm gonna reprint these with a slight tolerance change and we'll give it another shot. Let's give it a shot. Cool. So the idea here is you'd have more placement options. Get in there. There we go. Let's see if we can do a nice turn here. Yeah, I think this gives us a lot more options. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Except for the big gaping holes we've created. So I do have, you know, a concern with this, and that is, you know, once you want to go for it, you have to take your art and pop out the holes, and then you're kind of stuck. Because, you know, if you pop out the ones that you don't want to, then you still got a hole in your play field. I mean, this does work really well, except for the whole hole part. You know, there is something that we could possibly do. Possibly. It's kind of crazy, though. So call me, maybe. All right, so this is your play field. Let's say you had a piece of acrylic that went over it, right? And then instead of mounting these walls from the bottom up, you mounted them from the top down. So you could have an acrylic layer like this and you could test your curves and shots by making the walls go down from the acrylic. And then once it was the way you like it, then you could remove the acrylic and then pop the holes out and do it for real. I might be recomplicating this, but this part works really well. That's all we have for today, but I think we made some pretty good progress with this modular wall system where we can rotate it 22.5 degrees at a time, mm -hmm. and this living hinge uh, wall system. Yeah, I think our Reese's peanut butter cup solution is really gonna work for us. They definitely look just like miniature Reese's cups, although they do have little mini cups like that now as well. So what we're gonna do in our next episode is finish up this build. We're going to recut the play field. We're gonna put these shapes into it. We're also going to implement our newly adjusted flippers and put everything else in that we basically need to get the system up and running. But what theme should it have? Hmm, that's a very good question. We're gonna have to come up with a sample theme for our game. Yep. But I'm curious what everyone out there in the community would choose. If you owned a mini pinball kit, what theme would you have for your game? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. I have the strength of three kids. Well, there's people flying around in bathtubs now. Since we're finished with the super glue gun, mm -hmm. we're almost completed with the mini pinball, and we have this fancy new pie portable, I thought it was time to invite back James Ray to talk about product viability. So we talked to him already about the hex game. So in today's episode, we're gonna call him up via Skype and talk about the super glue gun, the mini pinball, and the Pi Portable. 